Do we dare to read some negative reviews of the new Elden Ring DLC, Shadow of Air Tree? Game is way too hard. I wanted a refund and can't get one. Do not buy this. That's pretty much all of the negative reviews. So this was actually a comment directed at me as I was debating people online. This DLC ex is exponentially harder than the base game, which is already seen as a hard game. People absolutely could have expected a hard experience and still been disappointed by how hard it is. I really think that this person might have been trolling me. It's harder than the base game where challenge is at the forefront. You would expect more challenge for an add-on, would you not? I like the part where the FPS goes down from 32 to 60 after the boss transition to second phase and proceed to do things, my FPS and not my character. 10 out of 10 would throw, you know what? If you're a PC gamer and you complain the game isn't working on your PC and you do this for pretty much every AAA game and this keeps happening to you, may I offer you a console in this trying time? We've so we've solved the issue of PCs not being able to handle games. Poorly designed game. Difficulty has to factor in summoning? Imagine if summoning did not exist and everything else stayed the same. They're suggesting that if there that there's no summoning and if there's no summoning, it's bad, but that's not what happened. Why would we imagine that? I think people just want to complain. The presentation is gorgeous. Art direction and music, 10 out of 10. However, the gameplay makes it hard to recommend. Let's see. As someone who beat all the FromSoft games. Okay, so they're they're letting you know that they're important and they know what they're talking about. Enemy movements are specifically designed to not make sense and to make the final fight more difficult. Apparently rolling when the enemy swings his sword is not good enough. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how it's kind of boss battles work. It, you, you don't always just roll. I don't know if you do, but sometimes you have to move backwards and forward. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's fine if enemies jump high, fly, or do magic, but changing trajectory mid-air, floating ominously and having impossible pauses mid-movement to throw the player off their reflexes is atrocious design for an action game. I don't think this guy knew what he was playing. How did I? The best part of this is knowing that people who played this had to play Elden Ring before they got here and somehow still had this frame of mind. That's the best part of this. We get one-shotted by this negative review. I I'm guessing he's not having a good time. Brought on his trash, everything is bugged. Too much damage, too long combos, too hidden things. Okay. You know what? I'm not even... I I'm not going to touch that one. I hope that the person who did the balance will be fired. That's an aggressive stance. I wonder if they've actually played a game with poor balance and what they would say about that. And then I'd also wonder what they'd compare for good balance. But unfortunately for us, uh, this person did not leave a detailed review. They left a review with just asking that someone be fired with no other information. Okay, so this one's Bandai. It's, this, is the, this is the company themselves giving players like this one right here who want them to be fired, giving these people who are struggling and just need to get good an actual way to get good. This is a suggestion to level up the scattered tree blessing. I might have butchered the pronunciation on that. Nonetheless, so they, they basically changed the format from Elden Ring to the Elden Ring DLC. It was the same exact game loop with the same exact things that level you up. Then you could be over leveled in Elden Ring, come into the DLC and just one shot all of the bosses yourself. So in order to prevent that, they create a new system. I think a lot of people didn't do the math on that, that if they're all coming into the DLC where the DLC they said was going to level with you, then for the starting point to be kind of equal for everyone, you're going to need to have a different thing that you have to level up, aren't you? So I don't know why people were complaining. I saw, I've, I've seen numerous reviews where people complain, oh, I don't want to level up something new because I did all this work in the game. Well, then why, why are you playing a new game called the DLC if you don't want to do the things that the DLC has? It's, you just wanted to be able to one shot everyone. <laughs> then you would have complained that it was easy and that it took you five minutes and it wasn't worth the money. I, the game mechanic breaks everything you invested in the character you built in the base game. Mm-hmm. It's exact, 
exactly what I'm talking about. I reached the final boss and the difficulty spikes, spikes way too high and is not logical. Now that happens in a lot of games. So basically what that means is you haven't explored enough. Now in some games, that's not fun. But in Elden Ring, there's so much lore. And if you were playing Elden Ring and you don't like the lore, there's there's a bunch of other FromSoft games to play. Not everything in Elden Ring is attribution based leveling. And so they give you both of those options in Elden Ring, which is unique to games without difficulty levels that are this type of game loop, right? Elden Ring does that so that beginner players can also have a chance at this game. So to say that the difficulty spikes way too high, that's basically saying, hey, you either didn't level up enough or you didn't get good enough. So choose one. <laughs> the whole point of, of from soft games for the most part, one of the biggest points of it is to overcome an obstacle, overcome the large obstacle so that you feel like you've overcome that with the story so that there's that synergy. And I've also seen someone do a no hit level one run of the final boss. So it's a, it's a, it's a user error. It's one thing to say, oh, it's too hard. I don't like, but to say it's not a good gaming experience and that you wouldn't recommend it to other people because it's hard. That's like saying, oh, well, Animal Crossing was too easy and I don't I don't like easy games. It's not for you. Th that's a cozy game. How do people get to the DLC without enjoying a challenge? I don't get it. What a surprise. It's more woke garbage. Woken Ring? Shadow of the Rainbow Tree save your money? I'm sorry. If you get through all of Elden Ring, through all of Shadow of Air Tree, and you come to the conclusion, not that you've overcome an obstacle, not that you've gotten good, not that you've discovered a wonderful amount of lore that could take you probably like three years to fully experience if you played it from here until like December of 2027. And you are still probably gonna have lore that you could connect. I think you might be looking for woke. People didn't buy hot. Okay, so this is another one towards me when I was debating. People didn't buy hot sauce expecting ketchup. They bought hot sauce expecting hot sauce, but it got, so I told them basically you, wanted hot sauce you expected hot sauce that's what they give you is a challenging game and then you thought it was too hot that doesn't make it bad it just means that's not the hot sauce for you and you wanted a milder hot sauce so you bought hot sauce expecting ketchup and they say they bought hot sauce expecting hot sauce but it got an aftertaste to it that they don't like and they have every right to voice that complaint for others that also wouldn't like that taste so it's one thing to say hey this game was hard for me this is why it was hard and how it could have been better and why i didn't find hard to be a fun experience but if you're just saying hard is bad you have actually ruined the review system for for everyone else because you're putting that out there and people can't actually find information to tell if this is the game for them or not. Somebody might be choosing between the DLC and a different challenging type game or a different lore type game. They might be looking for how much open world experience is it really? How much can I get around it if I'm not very good at games, but I just want to experience the rest of the beautiful world. That might be what they're trying to figure out, but they don't give them any of that information. They just say, mm, hard game, bad. The number of bosses is insufficient and the final boss could have been better. It was a complete disappointment. I applaud them for having the opposite perspective of pretty much every other bad review we've seen. Most people think that the bosses are too much and this person's like, give me more. If you think that I'm being unfair to just people who need to get good, I'm going to disagree with this person as well because um, it looks like there's six critical boss fights minimum. Most people do more than that. And there's 40 to 80, depending on the qualifier in total bosses that you can fight in the in the dlc so um i don't know what they're looking for but somebody needs to to feed this person more games somebody needs to make games for this person because they want more bosses give them the games listen you have anybody who makes a game like this here's your audience right here we found them but they might review your game badly if you don't give them 900 bosses so get on it first of all if you don't own the game and don't own the dlc i don't understand what your opinion is based on second it seems very simplistic to me to claim that people are giving negative reviews because they can't beat the bosses we have seen how many reviews already where people said exactly that in my case, and surely in that of many, if we complain about the difficulty, it is because the boss fights have become too tedious and unfair. Oh no, the boss fight is hard to figure out. You actually have to do it over and over to learn the patterns and then practice doing moves that either remove yourself from those patterns, deflect those patterns, maybe even do a move that then is offensive towards those patterns and then do that over and over until you get good. And that's unfair. I, who knew?
it's practically impossible to learn them. Oh, here he's talking about the patterns of the patterns of mini bosses. So combat's limited to dodging for more than a minute until the boss tires of doing his ultra long combo. So this is an interesting one because I think a lot of negative reviews who actually mentioned a specific, thank goodness we have a few, mentioned the ultra long combo. And so to them, they're thinking this is a waste of my time because I can't do anything about it. When really have they ever thought there might be a reason behind it? Maybe? Maybe just try to figure out the motivation for a second. And that could be to actually add something that a lot of games don't have. And that's to annoy you <laughs> and frustrate you as you try to learn because you realize, oh, this is a really long combo. So if I mess up, it's worse than messing up over here. So this is a part that I actually need to focus on even more and that there might be layers to why they're doing it, just maybe. And so if you're gonna sacrifice something, don't sacrifice right there. You can try to hit him while he's doing a combo, but then you'll probably receive a hit that leaves you with a half with half life. So that's a decision maker right there, right? You can decide to hit or not hit, but that's your decision and you can invest properly based on that. And so you can say, well, I'm gonna go ahead and do it because I didn't miss that move earlier. So it's a real time decision. Well, this is the first time I haven't gotten hit at all. I'm gonna go ahead and hit. I can heal up in a second when I get out of here. And so you have that real time decision making knowing how much damage it does. So there's nothing wrong with an ultra long combo inherently. They're just upset because they didn't get good. Listen, I read many negative reviews and most complained about these things. Yep. Really liked Elden Ring, but wouldn't recommend this DLC to anyone unless you're someone who likes to suffer and can spend all day playing the game. If you loved the original Elden Ring, this game is not for you. Okay, so I think this is getting to the crux of what the problem is here. I think a lot of people who don't really like challenging games but wanted the clout of playing them played Elden Ring and then probably got their friends to help them through the hardest bosses and they they felt real good about themselves and then they came into the Elden Ring DLC and they started getting stomped on and they were really upset and so they're like well Elden Ring was fun but the DLC isn't because it's hard and I'm hurting and because there weren't a lot of guides out right at the beginning when everybody was playing it, all the streamers were going through Elden Ring really fast and trying to get the clout. And then they go in because they're like, well, Kai did it, so I'm gonna do it. And there's there's nothing wrong with doing what other people do. I'm just saying, I think, I think there's just a lot of ego in some of this. So they think, well, if I can't do it, it's obviously a bad game. Okay, so this was someone replying to me again. Do you know what a review is? Funny for them, it, I didn't say it in like this whole thread, but the reason that I debate people on how proper reviews should be written is because I, I've done analysis work for over a decade. I was trained to analyze things and break down everything into their smaller components and figure out where the problem really was and how to do the solutions. And I feel like a lot of reviews are like, it's all about my opinion. There is actually an art to analyzing art. Every art is valid and every art's going to have a different audience and every art is going to serve a different audience. But when it comes to gaming, people get so aggressively passionate because it's the interactive experience. They feel more involved. They feel more like it's theirs. And so a lot of reviews aren't actually helpful for other people or for game devs that maybe are looking to get inspired and say, what did people like or dislike about this game so I can know what to do in my game? For any purpose that somebody might be looking at a review, it's not very helpful if you only give your perspective and and don't give any evidence of why that is. And so you're just like, well, it is hard game, so it is bad game. Instead of, okay, well, this game was really hard. Here's who it might not appeal to. Here's who it might appeal to. The difficulty level was because of this, this, and this compared to the other games that are made by this developer or compared to other games in this part of the industry or compared to the expectations that they marketed it. Here's what I saw and here's why I think it's good or bad. For me, I try, even if I'm not liking something to say why I don't like it and that that's my experience. And so the way that I stream a game and talk to my chat about a game is very different than I would put in a professional review or even just like a review like this on Twitter or on anywhere else. So all of those places have different types of reviews for different types of audiences. It's interesting to see ones like this where somebody says reviews are always subjective opinion pieces and many longtime gamers also do not seek out a challenge and want a more chill approach. Sure. But if you want a chill game, why did you buy Elden Ring? <laughs> Why did you buy a FromSoft game out of all of the games that exist, millions and millions of games that exist, you bought a particularly challenging game known for being a challenge. And you said, but I wanted a chill game. No, that's a you problem. I'm sorry. You put your expectations in the wrong place for the wrong game.
The industry is not really catering to either end of the spectrum. We have to talk about this. So the industry actually caters to easy, much more than hard, because most gamers are not the most experienced gamers. They're the gamers that come in and play for a little bit here in the evening, and then on the weekends, they have a job, they have a life, right? The most experienced gamers maybe have a little bit more time <laughs> for whatever reason, or maybe that's just their hop and they do it more than anything else. I'm not judging, clearly. I am I am an experienced gamer, though not the best gamer. What I've noticed, even as like an average, maybe slightly above average in skill set at this point, because I've been gaming so much the last couple years, I've noticed that there's a lot of really easy games and there's a lot of games that now cater more towards easier crowds and that offer more options for easy settings. Even in Elden Ring, while there's no like difficulty levels, you can choose to cheese the whole game. We just saw, um, for anyone who hasn't seen it, I think Asmin just did a whole run cheesing the whole thing. I, I saw one player who, he used a mimic against Mesmer and he didn't even have to hit him maybe three times because he went up and he hit him and then let, and then he would like back up wildly and like start healing and then like roll around and like run back here. And then he would like go in for a hit and then he's like, oh no, and then back up. And he did that like, you know, a few times until, until his, uh, his mimic did all the work for him. And so there are easy difficulties, even in the hardest games. There's no games out there. I, I can't think of a single, I mean, there might be a few. And if you know of any, put them down below because I want games to aim for, but there aren't very many games out there that truly have no cheesing ability. I don't really understand this concept of, oh, there's only hard games out there. No, most games are actually easy and there's nothing for the hard players. I think I think the Souls community in general can become slightly toxic when, you know, it's a lot of like true hatred towards other people for not doing it the way they want them to do it. But I think part of it, it, it stems from a place of there's no games for the most experienced players. They have nothing to like say, oh, well, I beat this game, so I'm really good. They don't have that. There's no marker for that because pretty much every hard game they've made possible for a wider audience by making it easy as well. And so there needs to be someone that's just, that may, it pumps out a few games for the people who really, really are good at gaming and that doesn't exist. So I, there's no review in this entire that we've read so far that I disagree with more because we need harder games, not easier. The market is currently for the masses and not for the subsets. There are plenty of really easy games. They're infinite. Just play anything on Nintendo. Oh, I'm gonna get Nintendo people yelling at me now. Listen, I have them all. I have every console. I'm not insulting any group of people. I'm part of all of them. Okay, so this, this inspired a lot of discussion and thought for me in a way where I realized how truly awful reviews are in gaming. And I think part of that stems from a huge, almost misunderstanding between those who are making the games and those who are enjoying them, because we, and, and just like a true ungratefulness, because think of how far gaming has come and literally games are just purely made for people's enjoyment and for the hopes that they could make a profit because of people's enjoyment. Games are not to make you feel bad. They're to be a good thing, a fun thing. And yet people complain nonstop. I don't know if I've ever seen an industry where people complain as much as gaming. In books, nobody, there's certainly Goodreads people who take it very seriously and they, you know, do their analysis. But on Goodreads, you're gonna see a lot of people analyzing books in a much more methodical way and a thoughtful way. And part of that is the fact that they're reading. So I don't know, maybe more people just need to read or something. But to be fair, that's not the answer either because this review is probably the most educated language I have seen maybe ever on an internet anything. Somehow this person has brought every word of the dictionary and they did such a good job and it was beautiful, but it was also ridiculous. <laughs> Just because you package something well doesn't make it good. And this review was packaged and flowed beautifully. I'm now reviewing the review, but it didn't make any sense because the person basically just at the end of the day said three out of five, this game's too hard for me, which is so disappointing. I, I don't mind people who debated me on this were like, you just want them to give a good score. I'm like, not at all, actually. I think that we need probably more negative reviews in general in gaming, but not in a way where it's that toxic. I hate this game because this game is not what I expected and wanted when the expectations and the wants were laid out by the marketing 
and the industry and the genre and the everything was appropriately paced and they're just complaining because it wasn't the game for them but i do think there's something to be said for there should be maybe a different type of rating system that isn't just bad is one or bad is zero good is five i think we need sliding scales of what make up games because there's a lot of different theories on what the motivations behind making games are, what people are looking for in games. And if we have a sliding scale rating system of this game is this much challenging and this game is this much focus on narrative, is it something that could only be done in this medium and why? And if it's put in a different medium, that's going to be a different, a fully different experience. I think that's that's an important part of it. If you're interacting within a game, that translation is going to be different once you put it on a screen. But why? How will that affect the way that people engage with and interpret the story? And to say the gameplay like this, where it's you have to overcome while you're also feeling that in the story, that's a synergy. Or if you were stealthing through a game that was like a very upbeat story, you'd be like, what is this? There's got to be a little bit of, well, no, that's not true either. If, you, if you're stealthing through a game that has a very upbeat story, then that might still be synergistic. It just might be a tonal shift from what you're used to. So there's all of these different like ways that you can shift things in fun new ways and create new combinations. But at the end of the day, there has to be a certain amount of synergy where it makes sense for it and where it works. There's also, oh, how much people want to have like freedom of expression, right? And how much people want to have creativity and all of that. Because obviously a game has to be limited in certain capacities. Where are they limiting? it, how, why, the combinations of all of those factors are what make a game, but games are built on the same components over and over and over again. I want to look at the next picture because this is what they said, right? They said, this however feels like difficulty for difficulty's sake turned up to 11, perhaps because with the added expectations of a DLC, having something extra absurd to conquer, even though it technically doesn't require finishing the core game. I go through dozens of deaths over a period of several days, and despite taking breaks to go off and do other things and explore other areas, I realized that I just don't want to do this anymore. And part of that, I think, is the crunch. You know, I think that that journalists who are crunching a game to get it done and people who are crunching it because they want the clout of having finished the DLC already and be able to talk about it or people who are crunching because they don't want they don't want spoilers. I think there's such a weird part of the industry now where it's not just game development crunch, it's player crunch. People feel like they have to finish a game as fast as possible. And I'm definitely one of those people i've played the entire last of us series non-stop like last of us one with the dlc where it belongs chronologically last of us two and played it non-stop recently because i that's i like to get the full scope and breadth of like a story i did all of the mainline assassin's creed games last summer with it i said 15 years within 15 weeks is what i called it so that's something that i like to do and i understand it so i am definitely not dumping on that but what i am saying is that it can become a little bit toxic when you then judge a game for having too much content and being too difficult and being too demanding and being too too much because you've tried to stuff too much in a short period of time and you've burned yourself out of the game. And so if you are not someone who likes that type of gaming, you probably shouldn't do it. You probably shouldn't be in gaming news reviews specifically, especially if you're not somebody who likes a hard game, why would you review the hard game? And so I actually read this whole review because I had people debating me. I get it. I get the crunch time, but you can't just say, oh, three out of five, because I get, I don't even care what the actual number on the review is, because again, that's a hard thing to, it's hard to quantify the quality of a game, especially when you're trying to say for yourself. My problem is that a lot of people aren't thinking about their audience when they say it, and everything that we should do should be thinking about the audience, not just ourselves. When we're creating art, that's part of it. You have to decide between how much you want it to be just yourself and how much you want it to be for other people. And yes, some art is just for yourself, but as soon as other people have it, as soon as other people see it, that is also their art you have given it to them. All art is a is an exchange of information. That's a choice, you can do that, but just know that it is still going to communicate something with others. So you've just neglected a portion of what that's going to do because you selfishly wanted it to just be for yourself. And that's okay, that's all right. But just know that if you're not thinking about it as a reviewer, who is a professional, where your job is to explain to other people what your experience was so that they can decide for themselves what they want and so that they can maybe relate to it, you should maybe communicate effectively instead of just feeling like your ego's hurt and then taking that out on your score. Okay, so this was somebody saying, don't fall for the engagement bait of the, the post that we were just looking at. 
and saying that that's not what the review says. No, the review said that. I, I feel like the end of the review was basically just to, again, show off the beautiful prose, showing it off in a way where you're not actually saying anything of relevance. The, what, what's the phrase? Putting lipstick on a pig? But perhaps trying to combine the inherent focus of a largely self-contained DLC with the narrative flexibility and open world freedom of Elden Ring, the concept that set it apart from its soul's brethren was always going to make for an incongruous match. So I think they really just wanted to say incongruous match, trying to suggest that there's no synergy between the DLC and the game. But anybody who's played a lot of DLCs knows that DLCs, there's different ways that DLCs are created, but generally it's not going to be the exact same experience you've already had or that you could continue to have in the replayability of the main game. It's gonna be something unique. And so I think that this reviewer probably hasn't played a lot of DLCs. And I think that that's a problem when you're putting that in your review as something that you think is bad. It's one thing to say, oh, I don't know about DLCs, so I'm not going to rate it on this. But if you were a professional reviewer and you're going to include it, you should probably go ahead and do some homework on what is common in DLCs and gaming. You should do your research in what's common in FromSoft and what's common in the industry. That's how you analyze as somebody who is getting paid as a professional. You have to do your research so that people like me can't tear apart every word that you say and suggest that, I don't know, maybe you didn't do your research. That's my problem with this type of narrative. Not that it's negative. And you kind of have to think about the player. And so that's why you could say, well, the game is challenging. I couldn't even finish it. So this is a great game if you like a challenge, though know that it's different than these games in this way. And I think it could have been better if they did this. So I'm going to lower my rating, but it's still great for a gamer who loves a challenge. And that's how you can kind of frame it. I'm not saying they had to do exactly that in this review. I'm just giving an example of how you can frame things while also still stating your op opinion, your experience, and using that as a framework rather rather than saying, mm, no, hard game, bad game. While the DLC is a 10 out of 10, it's just too hard. I have a life outside of video games and I don't wanna have to keep replaying the same boss over and over again. We need an easy mode for Elden Ring and its DLC. That is skill, like attribution-based leveling. Grinding through the game calmly and through the world and you could not ask me to be bothered by that for the most part unless there's really good lore and really good rewards and the system has a lot of surprises that are really fun and it's worthwhile like i really like having a goal i don't understand the well they will never understand the immersive experience that i had where i just walked through the world very slowly and took it all in take it in while i'm just slaying the entire countryside or i don't know play, playing a mini game or something or planning out a strategy of taking down a whole fort or getting to the objective without anyone seeing me i'll do that or effective use of a new tool or what kind of combination of things will make for the most fun at the next objective right like that's how i play the game and i understand that not everybody does that's what i've been trying to make a point of this entire video but the easy mode's there for people who want it and the easy mode is to grind and so people who aren't good at games then complain that they're repetitive but they put that in so that you have a way for an easy mode without them having to make difficulty levels that would then ruin the way that the game loop is because game loops that don't have difficulty levels are built that way for a reason and they would have to be built differently an entirely different structure of game to allow for difficulty levels and so people aren't doing the math on this they don't think about the motives of the game devs and i think they need to more in order to understand why the game isn't made for them and why there's plenty of other games for them why romina not big boob woman i guess we have to leave it there we found one we can't disagree with i'm mad curious if you disagreed with me say why below if you agreed with me put i'm a good gamer down below and if you don't like and subscribe i will find every comment you've ever made and i will disagree with it so i will definitely see you in the next one